Hey everybody, welcome back. So I have more news from my experimentation with responsive design in WPF. Now last episode what we did is we set up this responsive stack panel. So whenever our window is wide enough, we make our stack panel go horizontal. But then whenever our window gets skinny or too small, we make our stack panel vertical so that all of our elements fit on the screen and we can just scroll through them. Now to set this up, we created the style and there's a couple issues with this style. So first off, this takes quite a few lines of code. And even worse, this style is not reusable at all. We depend on this element name of root. And then we also hard code this converter parameter of 400. So even if we didn't depend on this element name of root, that means every single stack panel that used this style would have to go into horizontal mode whenever the width of the window went to 400. So based off those issues, we cannot use this style in my opinion. So let's just go ahead and delete it. And we're also done with this converter as well. So we need a better solution. And what is that solution? It is behaviors. Behaviors are super powerful in WPF. There's actually two ways to implement behaviors. You can use behaviors in the form of attached properties, which are built into WPF, or you can use behaviors from the system.windows Dot interactivity DLL, which we're not going to be getting into in this episode because I really haven't touched those much. I really feel that attached properties are super powerful in WPF and they get the job done. Plus they're built in, so you can't go wrong with them. And they're a pretty fundamental part of the framework. So let's go ahead and set this up. Let's make some attached properties so that we can get a responsive stack panel. So what I'm going to do is create a new folder here and this is going to be behaviors and we are going to create a behavior here called the responsiveness behavior so keep in mind I'm calling this the responsiveness behavior because this is going to have nothing to do with stack panels this is going to give us responsiveness for any element in WPF so it's going to be super awesome Let's go ahead and make this public and let's start defining our attached properties that we're going to use that are going to make up this behavior. So what you can do is you can use this prop a snippet. Hopefully this is built into Visual Studio for you guys. It was for me. So go ahead and set up this prop a snippet and just press tab and it'll generate an attached property just like that. And if you guys aren't familiar with attached properties, no worries. We're going to go over that in just a second. So this first attached property, we are going to name this the is responsive property. And it's just going to be a Boolean. And the owner class is going to be this behavior. So the responsiveness behavior. And by default, is responsive is going to be false. That's the first property or the first parameter of this property metadata constructor. Let's go ahead and move this to a new line. And let's import all of this stuff. So what is so great about an attached property? It's actually very similar to a dependency property, except all we're doing here is we register attached rather than just register. So we're registering an attached property. And what is so great about this? Well, if I go into my stack panel view and I import the namespace with that behavior, so behaviors, and then on the stack panel, I can use that namespace take a look at our responsiveness behavior in that namespace and I have this is responsive property. So by using an attached property, we can, well, we can attach this property to any element in WPF. So I am going to set is responsive on the stack panel to true. So what does that do? Well, it does nothing because we don't react to setting is responsive to true on elements. So this isn't just like magic. We're not going to be able to set is responsive to true on our stack panel and it's just going to work. We're going to have to actually do things in there. But before we get into that, let's define some more attached properties so that we know what to do when is responsive gets set to true. So we're also going to need an attached property and this is going to be horizontal breakpoint property. And this is going to be a double and the owner class, of course, can be the responsiveness behavior. And by default, this is just going to be double dot max value, actually. 
And what, what this basically represents is that converter parameter that we had before. So before it was 400 as that converter parameter. And what we did was whenever the window was 400, we went into horizontal mode. So that is what this horizontal breakpoint property is. It's going to be that 400. So another thing that we're going to need is an attached property for what we want to do when the window width is wider than this horizontal breakpoint. So inside here, we're going to have horizontal breakpoint setters. And this is going to be a setter base collection. So this is pretty much what you see in a style. You see a collection of setters. That's what the setter base collection is going to have inside of it. And it's going to be response in this behavior. And by default, it's just going to be an empty setter base collection. Let me move this to a new line as well, like that. All right, so what we're doing is we're going to have a horizontal breakpoint. And whenever the window is wider than that breakpoint, we're going to apply all these setters to the element that is responsive. Now, one last thing that we're actually going to need is we need to track if these setters are active or not. So what I'm going to do is create another attached property is horizontal breakpoint setters active. And this is going to be a Boolean. So they're either active or they're not. And by default, it's just going to be false. So there we go. That is all of our attached properties that we need. Now we need to just set this up so that whenever the window is wider than this breakpoint, we apply all those setters to our responsive element. So let's actually go into our stack panel view and set up what we want those values to be. So behaviors, responsiveness behavior, what do we want our horizontal breakpoint setters to be? Well, we need a setter based collection. And inside here, we want to set the stack panel dot orientation property to horizontal. And as you guys may have noticed, I prefixed this with stack panel because we're not inside of a style. So we need to explicitly state the path to the property. So we're going to set orientation to horizontal. And actually, while I'm here, I'm also going to set horizontal alignment to center because why not show off how you can do multiple setters in here and then the other attached property that we have is horizontal breakpoint so this is when we want these setters to be applied so when the window is wider than 500 we want these setters to be applied so now we just need to actually implement this so you might be thinking okay I know what you're gonna do inside this setter right here this is what gets called when we set is responsive to true what it's going to do is call this method pass in the stack panel pass in the new value of true what you're going to do Sean is you're going to check if that value is true you're going to apply a bunch of stuff to the stack panel to make it responsive but that is not the case that is not what we're going to do you really do not want to mess around inside of this setter because if I were to do that and apply a bunch of stuff to the stack panel, make it responsive, and this set value didn't actually set the value, say there was some kind of validation error, then that wouldn't be good because that means it wouldn't actually be responsive, but we just applied all that stuff. So what you want to do instead is you want to set up a property changed callback that is only going to be called when the is responsive property actually got set. So I'm going to call this on is responsive changed. And I'm going to generate this callback. Let's go ahead and move this all the way to the end of the file because I don't want to get it mixed in with all of these property definitions right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the dependency object. So this is going to be our stack panel. I need to make sure it's a framework element. And a framework element is pretty much the base class for almost every element in WPF, or at least a lot of them. So we're going to be able to apply this behavior to pretty much every element. So let's call this element. And what I want to do is I want to get a reference to the current window of the application. 
and you'll see why in a minute but you can do this with application current main window and then what I want to do is I want to see if this new value is true so I want to see if our stack panel or our framework element or whatever gets passed in here I want to see if is responsive is true on that and to do that we can call it get is responsive which is this method up here and it'll give us the new value of the property so I can pass in the framework element so if that's true what I want to do is I want to take my window and I'm going to subscribe to the size changed event and inside here I'm just going to do a little anonymous function I'm going to update the element and pass in the window and pass in the element so this is going to execute this method that I generate it's going to execute every single time the window size changes so inside this method we really do not want to be doing anything too intense because I mean size changes that's like pixel by pixel any little change it's gonna fire update elements now if is response we get set to false all we're gonna do is unsubscribe so let's go ahead just do a little minus equals there and this element is no longer going to be responsive so inside here what I want to do is I want to get the window width so we can do that with our window that we have and I want to see if the width of the window is greater than the breakpoint width so this horizontal breakpoint property that we have here and if it's greater than that then we're going to apply our horizontal breakpoint setters that we define. So let's go ahead and get the breakpoint width for the element. And we can do that with our get horizontal breakpoint method right here, pass in the element. So, for example, for our stack panel, that's going to give us back this 500 because that's what we passed in as the attached property value. So if the window width is greater than we'll do greater than or equal to the breakpoint width then we are going to first off set is horizontal breakpoint setters active for the element to true so that means we are currently in horizontal mode the reason we want to keep track of that is because inside this if statement we only want to apply those horizontal breakpoint setters if the setters aren't currently active so we can make sure that is the case by calling get is horizontal breakpoint setters active so that's going to give us back the value of this attached property and if it is false then we are going to activate the setters and we're going to do that by applying a custom style to our element so I'm actually going to move this to its own method so we'll call this create response the style for the element but we'll do that a little bit later but otherwise if the window width is less than the breakpoint width so that means we need to go back into vertical mode we need to unapply that responsiveness style that we're going to create right here undo all these setters and we need to make sure that the setters are actually active before we try to unapply them then what we're going to do is first set these setters to inactive for the element and then we are going to undo the style and we'll go over how to do that in just a second so let's actually create this response from the style and inside here we are just going to create a new style so I'll call this response in the style and the new style and inside this constructor we specify the target type so that's going to be element .get type of our framework element so of course if our framework element is a stack panel this is going to return stack panel it's not going to return framework element because you know polymorphism and then we're going to base the style off of the current element style because I don't want to override the element style because it might have specific stuff applied to it such as like a background color or something I don't know but then inside here we need to apply those horizontal breakpoint setters so we need to apply everything in this setter base collection that is our horizontal breakpoint setters property so what we're going to do is do it for each and we're just going to iterate over all the setters in the 
horizontal breakpoint setters attach property for the element and we're going to apply the setter to the style by just adding it to the setters collection for the style like that and then once we're done with that we can just return the responsiveness style and there we go so now inside here we have this method and how are we going to undo the style well to do that we can just get the style that we based on so we passed it in right here this is the old element style that doesn't have the setters so that is what we're basing the response in the style on so if we just set that as the new style it'll undo all the setters so there we go so now let's go into our stack panel view and i think we're actually ready to test this out so let's give it a go all right so it looks good so far we are horizontal because our window is past that 500 breakpoint so let's actually go small and there we go now we are no longer applying these horizontal breakpoint setters because we are under 500 for our window width so that's great but you might be looking at this and you might say okay well we still have to define all this but take a look we can define a style for all of our stack panels so we can give this a target type of stack panel and inside here let's actually bring in our behaviors namespace right there and I can provide setters for these properties so I can set the property for the behaviors is responsive we can set that the true by default and then I can also set the horizontal breakpoint setters and of course to provide this value we're gonna have to put this into its own little nested value down here and we can just go ahead and copy that from right here and remove that we can also remove is response of the true because we're going to inherit that value from this style and there we go and we get the same behavior and why is this great because now if I have another stack panel so let me just copy this and we're gonna have to wrap this in a another stack panel so that we can have multiple elements here so now let's say this stack panel has a bunch of user cards so we don't want this one to go horizontal until say 800 so when our window is greater than 800 width then we're gonna go horizontal so to set this up all I had to do was change one little property right here and now our stack panel didn't go horizontal until we hit that breakpoint. So this is all tucked away in a style. It's super reusable and it's all through the power of attached properties to make a behavior. And even better, it's not even tied to stack panels. You can do this for pretty much any element you want. So we're probably going to explore that later in this series in a future episode. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, criticisms, or comments, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. But other than that, if you like the solution, be sure to leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.